guys, Father Time, this picture is of the Isle of Skye in Scotland. I've traveled all around the world in my uh, years, but sure would like to get out there and instead of staying in big city hotels like I did as my 36 years as an airline pilot, I would like just to go out and explore the countryside. Anyway, that's not why we're here. I'm happily retired in the safety of my basement nowadays as of six months ago. Today is March 22nd, 2024, and I am here to do a FSI panel scenario. If you guys don't have SFI panel, it's uh, train like a real pilot. It's, it's, it's the motto. Great program. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go set up, and the profile that I'm going to do, I'm going to do it in A300-600. You do this before you sign on. For those of you who have been with me before, you know on these, I give you a full FSI panel briefing in a full pre-flight, so you can fast forward I'll have the timestamp up to uh, clearance on my timeline if you want to avoid FSI panel instruction as well as pre-flight for the A300. Just get right to the scenario. Pretty simple scenario today. Take a look at this. I just want to show you one thing that I fell for. I clicked on uh, Air France 704. I'm trying to work my way through these profiles for the uh, just to get some exposure and just to because I love them. Air France 1704. There's two of them. One is in English, EN. One is in French. What I learned yesterday, I, I clicked on here to do the lesson plan, and I updated it. Is that it's actually the call sign is going to be 48 golf mic, 48 golf mic, not 1704. So if you don't be surprised if you click on here, get your paperwork ready, which I have everything written down here um, for 48 golf mic. That's what it's going to be. And I'm going to download the scenario. When it gets to my database, it will tell me. There it is, added to my database. It is now in green. All's good. Um, here it is, and I write this all down. Uh, it's 48 golf mic, no engine failures, gate C21 to C83, and flight level 210. Write that down. A flight from Lyon to Nice. It's got ATC voices, and it's a beginner profile. If you had a YouTube tutorial down here, it would say so. You click on it. Hopefully tomorrow or this afternoon, I do well enough on this profile. JP will put that in. So if you come in here and uh, you're in a generic aircraft looking for that profile, you might see a YouTube tutorial. That'll be me. It's going to be about a two-hour YouTube video, but you'll be able to fast forward through all the trademarks. I'm only getting about 150 views for all of my A300 tutorials. Uh, I think it's long since past its, its appeal, but um, I'm really, really, really enjoying it. I have 5,000 hours in the A300. So we've downloaded the scenario. Go to Sim Brief Flight Plan. This is before you ever sign on, right? And there it is, Air France 48 golf mic, even though we said 1704. The alternate on here, uh, which you'll learn in the lesson plan, is Marseille, which is KFML. So I'm going to set this up for um, alternate KFML, KFML. There it is. For the profile that is on the lesson plan, I'm going to do the A300-600B. I'm going to use the any fuel factor for the any builds, which I'll be flying. What else is wrong here? Departure runway is 17 right, and arrival is 4 left. So 17 right, and arrival is 4 left. So it's really important you go through the lesson plan, which we'll do before you do sim brief. I'm just showing you this ahead of time. Last thing is altitude. Make sure you put in the correct altitude. They want it at 210, flight level 210. Okay, so we've got... Air France, 48 golf mic from Lyon to Nice, alternate of Marseille. And there's the aircraft. There's the runways are correct. There's the flight levels correct. The routing. I got this off the lo ro lesson plan. This is also correct. It popped up. That's going to be our routing. That's what we wanted. And now you generate the flight. So we've got the... Uh, database updated with the new flight plan for 48 golf mic. We've got the sim brief flight plan correct. Move it on over and close out. Open the lesson plan. We'll review this for you. And as I mentioned, I do make up for every one of these scenarios. I make up a whole sheet here, like I would as a pilot. Get my notes before I go, especially short flights like this. So Leon estimated departure uh, 8 10 local time. So I'm going to set my clock for. Uh, my timeline on the weather for 810, 17 right, 
take the time to, on all these FSI panel profiles, guys, to read this, set it up properly, make sure your flight plan's correct, review all the takeoff, taxi approaches, everything ahead of time. It'll make them a lot easier, and that's what we do as real pilots. I'll set the scenery pack. These are the gates. I've written those down. Uh, it's going to, uh, if you're in the PMGG in Phoenix, we're not. It'll set your fuel weight. Sometimes the PMGG 7-3 fleet, the Phoenix, and the Leonardo Mad Dog will set your box, your uh, glacier control panel, mode control panel, whatever aircraft you're flying. This one doesn't. This is essentially a communications pack. But, 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 but. I'm going to get myself a co-pilot. I'm going to get myself a co-pilot that will change the frequencies, run the checklist when I'm directed. Um, very cool. And even have a say again button and a push to talk button. I'll show you how to set that all up if you're not familiar. Here's my routing. I wrote that down. What's missing? I don't have the transition level, which is on the descent coming back in, right? And I don't have my um, information, the name of it, and I don't have the runways. Uh, but here is the uh, 17 right. We'll, we'll get that. It's going to be my clearance. And we have, need a squawk as well in the initial flight level. And if it's not on the SID, they'll give it here anyway. And here's the weather. I write these all down. And I write them all down because I'm going to get the ATIS identifiers when I go through for 48 Golf Mike. And uh, so everything's kind of ready. So I'm decreasing my workload. Uh, ATIS is always 2345 in the FSI panel. By the way, FSI panel, I'm, I'm going to go through that with you. I love this program. So it says start Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator in Lyon, any parking stand at Terminal 1, which is C21 to C83. Make sure the aircraft is powered, then start FSI panel. I'm going to wait probably till we get the whole thing up and running. Uh, all pre-flighted. Don't want to, uh, this is going to be the tips. This one isn't too fancy. It's a, it's a level one a scenario. Uh, you did see uh, the when I was doing those FSI panels. You see the level ones, twos, threes, four. I tend to do the harder ones, to more fun. This one wasn't uploaded. And I think it will now. Maybe I'll do that next. I've got to go down to Florida family vacation here, uh, which is a great one for a week. And I'm working on the TFD IMD 11 program, so I do these things when I can. I'm loving it though. JP's an awesome guy that runs this loan development. He's a real captain for an airline and uh, he's uh, from from France and real cool to talk to. Guys really need to uh, join get this program. Taxi straight ahead on Tango Charlie. So I'm going to push back nose to the north. Taxi Charlie to Foxtrot. Want to know something funny? I did this yesterday in French. I didn't realize, I only noticed later that it was in, it had an English version and I, but I saw that it was 48 golf mic when I called up the paperwork so I decided I'd do it today um, it's not 1704 we'll see if they use 1704 um, the Romas uh, Ro Romam for South re re uh, departure initial climb clearance is 7,000 7, that's on the SID um, descent Ab Abdil 7R make sure you comply with descent restrictions first one out of below the FMS at Abdil and uh, make sure MUS is flight level Eight zero or above. Transition level will probably be down around six. And here's the ILS four. Nice approach. Yeah, I've never been to Nice. Been uh, around France to Normandy, a lot of times to Paris. My retirement video, which is on my web channel, 15 minute video with my family and everything. It was to Paris with my wife. Once in a lifetime, obviously, opportunity, man. All right. So um, tells you to put the next frequency in the uh, standby. Very cool. That's lesson plan, and I'm going to start up Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I'll be back. Uh, well, you know what? Uh, while it's starting, I'll give you my little FSI panel briefing. How's that? So I'm going to go. I'll be right back. Hold on. One. Okay, guys, we're back. I'm going to open up uh, FSI panel real quick and just cover the rest of the stuff uh, for there. So I'm assuming you jump in on any one of my videos that I'm doing as if, if, if JP puts them on his lesson plan. He has his own for the big three, but I tend to jump in and do some of the generic stuff because I'm retired. As this boots up, let's take a look at this. It's FSI panel 2020 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Evidently, this was really big over on P3D. JP has now fully integrated it over on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Every day, and I mean every day, he seems to be doing it when he's not flying as a captain. He seems to be putting on either a new scenario or a new feature. Let's talk about some of those. So here you go. The reason why it's trained like a real pilot is in the simulator, we have two two-hour blocks 
and usually like the captain flies the first block, the second block, the FO, switch duties. We've got to get all in the United States FAA, Federal Air, uh, Aviation Administration requirements for our particular aircraft. So it's multiple approaches. Um, so they, they don't have time to do start taxi takeoff on all of them. So they just beam you around, pop you around the pattern. A lot of times they take snapshots on final. We can do that. So the, ch the check airman back there at the panel will take a picture. Maybe you're on a four mile final and then beam you back. First one you do a go around, second one you do a landing. And uh, then you come on down one. Maybe you'll do an RNAV, you'll do any 9 on LS, you'll do a Cat 3, but they'll put you all around. If you just clicked on left hand down one and you're at the gate, it's not going to do anything. You have to be on the, the runway, engines running, ready for takeoff. Then you go position and you say left hand down one. What is left hand down one? Well, you can define it. It's down one right here. Let's say we want to be four miles wide, 3,000 feet. That's it position click on left hand downwind take your hands off everything it'll configure you on downwind um, let's say you want to be short final you click on short final what is short final well uh, we'll say final short we'll be going to be five miles and we'll kind of uh, we'll, we'll talk about the configuration what configuration is going to going to put you in well on the airbus it's going to put you in flaps uh, me brakes medium maybe we'll put them in low 30 40 the other one is engine uh, with an engine out I'm not going to do that right now. There's a beta for the MCDU. We'll come back to that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so that's what they do for position, multiple approaches. JP and others have many videos on that on the FSI panel. I also recommend their Discord channel. Very active, I've noticed, uh, and guys are great on there. Today is March 22nd. Database changed over, so it's tracking your nav database. Statue miles and pounds are correct. You update FSI panel through your Navigraph account. Uh, let's see cockpit flows oh man this is great check this out so you know how this flows before start after start take off after takeoff after landing shutdown this will do it for you, you can get yourself a co-pilot right so let's get ourselves a co-pilot what you do is you go select button or keyboard do you want to set keyboard keys combination instead of a joystick uh, no I'd rather set a joystick so here we're gonna go and I'm gonna go this and and I'm going to go Boeing yoke. Right, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go hostage stick, which is my taxi stick. I'm going to click on my trigger. There we go. Number one. Click it. Now I can do my cockpit flow, which is really cool for a checklist. I'll show you a lot about that as we go. So now we've got a cockpit flow thing, right? Really cool. Uh, going across. That's, that's it for the options page. You can see Mad Dog, PMDG, Phoenix, and Fly-By-Wire. You can do all sorts of failures down here. You can't do them on the other aircraft, but right now those are there. I think there's some beta versions coming out, like the CRJ 550, the CRJ fleet, uh, just Fokker. I mean, if you want to get a CRJ lights uh, rating, all these are great to train on. Um, any builds and uh, the A300 and 600. So JP a while back put this in and asked us to do videos on it. So that's how I kind of got in touch with him, doing videos on the Mad Dog, which he didn't need. Um, but I used to fly that a couple of thousand hours in that as a captain, check airman, and 5,000 hours in this airplane. 5,000 uh, starting in Toulouse back in 1988, and uh, all as a co pilot. Then I upgraded the captain on the 80, and off I went on my career. Uh, so after landing, we track speed brake. So after landing, you bring your speed brake lever up, it, it brings it up. That's a little more co piloting, although our trigger, you can do the after landing check as well. You got to watch it though, sometimes it doesn't get everything, so you got to kind of cross check, which we do in the real airplane. And then uh, scenarios. First time you ever sign in, it'll be like that. Auto tune the frequency. There you got more co piloting. So, what do you have now? You have speed brakes up, after landing check. We've, we've programmed a trigger to do some cockpit flows for us. Now you can auto tune the next frequency. Be patient. It takes five, seven, or eight seconds for those new frequencies to come in. You always got to check it before you key the mic. Sometimes they don't go in, but most of the time they do. But give it to be patient. And enable push to talk like that sim. I'm going to use my Boeing yoke. Uh, yeah, I'll use my Boeing yoke. And I'm going to use my push to talk, whatever lights up. Boeing yoke. Right, you click it. It's green. There you go. Say again. So in realistic, in the aircraft, you would be able to say say again to get your... You'd have voice on and say again button. Let's do say again. Uh, well, I'm going to use my hostage stick. Once again, use the F2 key. Say again is right there click the, the two uh, most realistic would be say again which of course we would have in voice only voice we're gonna use voice and text today for those of you who 
you know, don't understand the English English real well, at least you'll see it in English. Uh, with that, we've got, now what do we, what do we have for Copilot? We got voice and text, someone that's copying frequencies with us. We got a frequency change. We've got a push to talk button. We've got a say again button. We've got the flows. We've got the after landing with the speed break. Who's better than us? No one, no one. So we uh, did everything. We did download our scenery. We did our Simbri flight plan. We synced up our Simbri flight plan and we set up all our controls. We're good to go. With that, you close out with this. And when this all boots up, I'll be back cold dark airplane i love this stuff we're already uh, 15 minutes in and uh we haven't even gotten into the profile okay what do we got here we got an air france uh livery we're gonna go out of leon which is oh nope, no it's not in there yeah leon kfll because so i did it in french the other day and uh we're supposed to go to spots c21 through c83 and C21 through C83. That's these gates right here. Uh, this is what it says for C21 through C83. How uh, about if we go, uh, let's, what did I do for the other one? Let's go to 65. It's gonna be too small for our aircraft, by the way. And so there we go. We are at Lyon C65, which complies with C21 through C83 flight conditions going to set the weather that JP told us to set and it's uh, should come up Air France 1704 Air France 1704 right there so that's oh there it is Air France 1704 the weather and they said 8 o'clock departure time we'll just set it that, this has to be the ballpark guys I'm gonna set it a little bit later get it a little lighter all right, so we get the weather set, aircraft at the proper gate, close it out, and boot it on up. Yeah, boy, I, I'm, I'm loving this FSI panel, guys. you got to get it. And I'm not, obviously, I'm not getting paid to say any of this. I just think it's terrific. I really have a lot of respect for guys who develop these programs. Um, and not only that, it's the level of communication from them on Discord, from JP. I'm not sure if JP has anybody else working with them. It looks to me like it's just him as a developer, smart guy in a real airline pilot so he knows what he's doing now the profile is perfect no he wants you though to debrief him on discord tell him if you find a problem a missing frequency the, the flows aren't correct hey you should be turning off on the probe heat you should be doing this let him know sometimes he's right you're wrong uh, but otherwise he's very prompt to correct sometimes a scenario won't open you let him know within a day when, when he every lands gets to his hotel room probably he fixes it and uh just extremely responsive I've gotten a bunch of private emails from them just trying to um, straighten out a few things and as I tried to submit some videos this to him parking for is too consideration. Small for your aircraft. Um, okay, I want to request refueling. You always do that with GSX first or else the, and uh, that's fine. Refueling and, uh, truck let's is Let's go on outside and take a look around first. I give the refueling truck time to get here. Here we are, Lyon, France. Lots of airplanes out here. It's a Delta mad dog over there TWA 737 we actually at American Airlines have a TWA 737 oh, there it is that's it I've flown that thing in American color colors with T American Airlines in TWA colors our gate we're too large for this aircraft a little crooked, but that's okay. We'll see if it can get it done. Looks like it might be coming. Well, we'll see if this jet bridge can make it over. Anyway, Air France colors, Air France flight 1704, which we're, is probably going to be 48 fuel golf wide. is in position. Right, now, the fuel truck is here. I'll load it through the EFB. All right, let me get this in position. What a great product this any builds is. By the way, guys, I'm going to come inside. I am working on the, uh, sorry, that's one of my keys out of, out of whack there. Um, I'm working on the TFDI MD-11 project. There's a quality assurance guy. That, that's coming out great, really is. I'm going to get my Simbri flight plan. Leon to uh, Nice. Looks good. It's imported. View the operational flight plan. Looks good. We'd walk through that. We're going to come back up here. Let's do the logbook real quick. 
If you, the only thing I do, guys, I reset the emergency slides. By the way, this is going to be a A300 pre-flight. Some of you are new to the airplane. You might pick up a couple of things that I know. Let me know in comments if I missed anything, said anything incorrectly. <clears throat> but um, I've been flying that this long on Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's been years since I flew the real thing. Um, you can do your maintenance first. Think of it as checking the logbook. So I start there. We did my flight, got the flight plan downloaded, ground equipment, see what we got. We got the chalks in, Oh, we got external power unit is already in. Um, and uh, I reset the slides just because I've had the slides uh, deploy on me a few times on this airplane. That's why I did the reset emergency slides. Um, when I go to push back, the door won't arm, and I look, and it's the slides are deployed. Update from SimBrief, apply load to aircraft, and now we have the refueling truck in place. It'll gas us up in no time. And that's pretty much all we need to do here. Guys, I'm not going to use Navigraph. You can here once you sign in the first time. I've got my own Navigraph going. Matter of fact, we'll get it started now and get that thing loaded up. Probably still the own. Uh, unload. Import flight from SimBrief. And there it is. Yeah, okay. And so we'll put that off to the side. And now let's come back up front. And every pilot wants to get the power on the aircraft and get those IRSs aligning. Looking around the cockpit, my frames per second aren't the best. Uh, sorry. All right, circuit brakes were all in. This was, guys, I got my typewriting, as I mentioned, in Toulouse. All French instructors, French sim, but we didn't even have a simulator in America. We had to do the real airplane touch and goes. Um, so, anyway, the old, this is a 300. It's been around since the 70s. The 310 came out, maybe 1980 or something like that. The 300-600 is really a 310 stretched. 310. So my typewriting in Toulouse was A310 because uh, the cockpits are almost identical. The engine this is the old engineer's panel. It's now back there. It's all automated. The size of this overhead is humongous. Uh, now the new Airbuses are really clean. By the way, if you see external power available, that means the bolts and freaks are good. You don't have to check it. Um, but anyway, we check uh, crash axe, halon fire extinguisher, uh, pressure breathing equipment to fight a fire, the hood. This is the windshield wiper fluid, which we deactivated on all our fleets, is, is full. And right here is the spare, spare bulbs. And we've got the uh, life preservers behind the seat. You've got the flight manuals and the gear pins in case you get stuck out. And the, oh, evacuation ropes windows are closed and lock close and lock evacuation rope and with that you can come down the middle of the cockpit turn off the radar fuel control switch is cut off parking brake is off because you get the chalks in throttles are idle thrust reverse is down spoilers up flap levers up gear handles down and the got the windshield wipers are off with that you can turn on the battery let's take a look at the battery do a little instruction on that as I mentioned, go ahead to the pre-flight if you want to um, if you want to see the whole pre-flight. Let's see. So we're going to go uh, battery. Why did I play with that, right? So I'm going to go battery. It's the only thing that works right now. And you can see battery 3, 2, and 1 is all in the white band. And uh, you can see that it's discharging a little bit on the amperage. It's discharging. That's because it's the when I turn on these, it's going to be discharging. When I turn on these batteries, the static inverter converts a little bit of it to AC, and you get a little bit of a discharge. Now, when I turn on the external power, the battery amperage goes up because it's no longer draining the battery through the static inverter. It's a little little fun fact. External power, before we turn it on, you can check it, but that avail light means it's good. It's 115 plus or minus 5, 410 plus or minus 15, or something like that. Bolts and freaks are good. 400, 400 plus or minus 10, 115 plus or minus 5, I think it is. Whatever it is, they're all good. Uh, now that we've got the external power established, AC power is established, we're going to go get those IRSs on. We don't need our HFs, so you can turn those off. And they're aligning. If you go to any of these IRSs, go to status, in a little while you'll have a count down there how many minutes you have remaining out of the 10. All right, so with that, we can go to the, get the IRSs aligning. Align IRSs, go to menu, A cars, C 
sim brief. And there you go. You get some data in. You get the online IRS. Get that going. At this point, the one guy would usually do the origination pre-flight, and the, the other guy would do the outside, and somebody would start loading the box as soon as the origination pre-flight was complete. Boom. So let's do that. Let's go to the overhead. We're going to do our five columns here, starting on the upper left. Flight recorder. Little, little known fun fact here. We are required in the United States, probably in Europe, to have the voice recorder circuit break, uh, force recorder function working for pre-flight. Well, that doesn't work on the Airbus until you bring up your first fuel lever. Uh, and it works because that starts the flight recorder. So, so the voice recorder comes on when the flight recorder starts, but it doesn't start until you bring up the fuel lever. So you go ground control on, that starts the voice recorder, so you're on for the uh, pre-flight. There's something you want to say to each other that you don't want the voice recorder to pick up for the pre-flight, turn that off, turn it back on. I don't know what that would be. So here's the uh, flight control panel, lights that's all normal, 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 normal. Uh, hydraulic quantity, we're going to have to check that, and that is all in the uh, green, green band. I'll go bright on the uh, lights, snow smoking signs on. And I don't, I'm not loading the people yet because I want to cool off the aircraft. It is uh, 27 degrees. 81 and it's probably warm in the back. As a matter of fact, it is, uh, let me go over here, not too bad. It's 8 in the morning, but it's already 77 degrees. So we could stop right here, test the APU, scrub lights on, press and hold the APU light, go to your ECAM, loop A, and the second loop senses the fault, they'll give you fire, there it is. You punch it off using the master warning. Go back to the overhead. The light's still on. It's going to go loop A, then loop B. There it is. And the handle, the light goes out. And with that, you can go ahead and uh, nope, go ahead and start the APU. Turn on the switch. Give it about five seconds. Fuel pump, low pressure. Hmm. Let's go turn on the intertank pump number two. Uh, this fuel pump override you put on if you don't have external power. But if you have external power, you can just turn on anything. Pump number two. That, that gives enough time. Yeah, we want to wait till um, about five seconds. Gives a chance to go through a self-test for the APU door in the door to open. Then you can start it up and forget about it. Uh, or how about using the right one? There we go. Start and uh, APU bleed. I'm going to turn that on. Won't come on for one minute after start, but that way the air, you'll start cooling the aircraft. With that, I'll allow them to start boarding once we get the aircraft comfortable in temperature. Sometimes it takes a while to cool it aircraft. off. Boarding Press boarding. Requested. They're going to ask us about the crew. Let's get the coffee going. Galley power. All right. There we go. You can always watch the people coming on the airplane in Europe. The U.S. would tend to have this all blocked off. A lot of places in Europe where you, you can watch the uh, people walking on, they all wave to you. It's kind of a trip. All right, back up to the overhead, enough of that nonsense. So we're back here. Uh, we talked about all that. Check the switch. Yeah, guys, I'm going to do a lot you of the tests. Yeah, we're up in front of the There's the air kicking on. Script test, lights are on. Fire test. First loop, you get nothing. Second loop, you're going to get a fire right about there. Press it and hold it. Punch it off with the master warning. And then it's going to go loop A, off. So you don't get the fire warning, it's only one loop. It's loop B, looks good. And the fire handle light is out. So we're done with that one. All the electrical panel all looks normal. Uh, CSDs, uh, integrated drive generator, it turns off for high temperature, low oil pressure, high oil temperature, low oil pressure. If you ever disconnect it in flight, you can't reconnect it, you have to get maintenance to do it on the ground. Okay, some cruise boarding, that's good. Uh, down here, yard dampers, turn them on, auto throttles, turn them on. We, American Airlines, we didn't turn them on until we took the runway, after we had lined up on the runway before we set takeoff power because we had an aircraft accidentally hit Toga and go off the runway in St. Thomas. Pitch trip. You can try turning them on. They're not going to work. Uh, the IRS is already aligned. 
Oh, yeah, the Irishes are down to two minutes on the line. It's letting us keep them. With that, what I was going to show you is that you, if you don't get the press rating panel or you don't get the flight director or the bush or control panel, it's because the IRSs are lining or and you haven't turned on the pitch trim. It's happened to me a few times. Engine ice, uh, wing ice are all off. If you're 10 degrees Celsius or below after engine start, turn on. We should have had uh, nav lights on. I'll go to position one. There's two, one, because I'm flying. Most airlines, position one is captain. This is two is FO flying. Captain flying, FO flying, same thing for another system. That's what we use, or odd number flight even. Depends. Look at that. In Tel Aviv, uh, they set up a table here and they, they frisk people, go through their bags right in front of you. It's, uh, it's wild. Uh, that's a little fun fact. Okay, so we got here, all the way up top. Uh, landing gear, see how it's uh, all green? All green down here. If you were had a red indication, unsafe landing gear, but you looked up here, you had green, you're good to go. So we, both of them have to sense a unsafe gear for it to be unsafe. Uh, voice recorder is right you press the button, it goes in the green. It, bumps, it usually bumps four channels to see it vibrating. This is VHF number three is usually in data mode for eight cars. This is our eight cars dedicated. Back when I was flying, I got off in 1997, we would actually manually tune the the eight cars frequency. But nowadays, it's, it will say data here. Um, so that's your, well, you can take it out of data mode and fully functional uh, VHF number three. Fuel pump's got one on. Fuel's actually already done. Windshield wipers we mentioned off. Uh, lock the cockpit door. Overboard exhaust valve, you can see that it's up overboard because we're depressurizing the gate and we get the equipment cooling fans are running. I think it's takeoff power, it goes inboard, closes, and uh, over, it, it's got plenty of airflow over it, but no lights there. Swift test on the uh, fire handle in both, you would actually come down. No, nope, it doesn't do anything. Made a liar out of me. Do that fire test up here. Watch it from here. Blue Bay, Blue B comes on. We get the firelight. And there's the fire. Punch it off, master warning. So you're just checking the function of the master warning as well. Blue Bay, Blue B, then it will shut off. There we go. And now turn on oxygen, see how it's out of the green. So we checked our hydraulics, checked our oxygen. Uh, manual switch is covered. Covered for the cargo fire equipment. Turn on the window heat. Do not turn on the probe heat until after engine start. Uh, pressurization panel. Make sure it's not manual. If it was, that light would be on, and you'd have fault lights here. And also, look at these little lights here for the automatic system. Here it is. Captain's flying. We tend to switch this around for uh, captain flying is one, FO flying two. That way we make sure the systems get tested. Some airlines use odd number flight, even number flight, or home base, away base. Depends on what your airline uses. Uh, upper right. All the way up. Pack temps. No unwanted lights here. I'll show you a little trick. If you look down, see how it says Africa cabin. It's, it's in the CRT is where it should be. If you come in and you go to conditioned air, and you see that, you go, uh-oh, you call maintenance. You say, hey, uh, we got a problem with that here. And they, they come up and they say, that to CRT and say captain the problem to solve. Yeah. Not saying I've ever done that. Alright, so um, you can check the cargo temps, all this stuff up here. Why would you want to do that? Because you can just check it down here. That's your trim air valve position. That's the duct temperature coming into the cabin from the packs. That's what you actually have. So that's around 71 degrees cooling air, I would definitely want to board. But if you're seeing up here over 90 degrees, so what is that, uh, probably 30 cels uh, 32 Celsius, you don't want to board the people. You want to close the window shades and get that cooling going on. A uh, little bit about econ flow. We fly in econ flow. It used to be if you wanted to clear the smoke out with smokers back when we had them, you turn off econ, but it's a 1% fuel increase 
if you fly the whole flight with Econ off. So we used to fly with Econ on. Uh, AP lead is on. Emergency lights are armed. That's it, it's going to go. Sink. Inch here, inch here. All the lights. Check all the bulbs. Here's a little fun fact. Each one of these lights has four bulbs in it, one in each corner. You pull them out, you snap it out. This little tool you can use on the spare bulb kit behind you. Um, if you pull that out, you, you can replace the bulbs using the spare bulb kit. Maintenance doesn't like to do it, but because if you break a probe, you've lost the whole light and you're dead in the water. But you can tell which one it is where it's uh, dim. So if it's dim up here, you've got the top right bulb that needs to replace. Little fun fact, we used to replace them ourselves. Maintenance hated it because we break the probes. All right, so the IRUs are fully aligned now. Come down. Check the oxygen, press the button, look for flow. Put on the mask and check for the uh, your comm button. I just turn on whatever lights I can here to get started. Coming across the panel, you've got uh, no unwanted flags. I um, will set the altimeters. Should be... One zero, wow, uh, one zero one four two nine nine six, and that is the correct field elevation. Add eight hundred feet to that. It's uh, six ten would be our engine out for the airline. It went the long, wrong, long way around. Eight hundred feet above it's our engine out, right there. And uh, you know while we're there, when I talk about altitudes, we cross check the altimeters. Cross check the altimeters all within 70 feet. A little bit about this landing elevation. Now, American Airlines, we use takeoff and landing. So we, we actually took off with whatever our field elevation Because imagine, you know, if you get, if you got an engine out and you came back in, uh, you would. So we changed this over the cruise checklist. We changed it to our destination. Got to be careful, make sure you get it done. Now, we the DFB, we don't have a cruise checklist. So, but they do on the Microsoft Flight Simulator checklist, which, by the way, is the best checklist I've ever seen on Microsoft Flight Simulator for uh, air, an aircraft. It's really cool. But anyway, I digress. So we're going to set a departure field elevation of 800 feet. It says landing elevation, but we're, we're considering that we're landing on an engine out. Spent too much time talking about that. Now let's cage and adjust this one, the uh, standby attitude indicator. That's all good coming across uh, panel will set in a minute and we want to uh, make sure that the anti skid is a normal motor brakes are off normal that's going to come up with the checklist this is the brake fans we use that every flight landing gear tested both systems and system one and uh, we use it system one or system two, depending on who's flying. Um, so if you get an unsafe, you can check the other system, uh, which transfers the overhead data down. Um, okay, we check this. For our panel, when we get here, engine, we check our oil quantity. We check, I think six, uh, 12 is the min. We check the hydraulics, which we checked earlier. We check our oxygen, which we checked up top. All right, spoilers down, thrust reverse is down, throttles are idle, fuel, fuel cutoff switches are off, flaps are up, mains matches the gauge, uh, parking brake. I'm going to set it now. Okay, so we're going to they're going to be removed the chalks. We set up our radios, set up our squawk, rudder trim we zero out, aileron trim we look on the top of the yoke, elevated trim we start at about zero. Radar is off as we mentioned, and we're good on the pre-flight. Yep, let's go down the box and load this bad boy up. To do that, I'm going to get my SIM flight plan ready to go. And we're going to go to cost index 35. I'm not going to bother letting you guys watch the... Uh, flight plan because you know where to get this information. Flight ID is Air France. So it is AFR 40F Golf Mike. AFR.
R48 gallon mic. I know it says uh, 1704, but the transmission is going to be 48 gallon mic. The wind's all good. Next page. Block fuel was supposed to have, sorry, uh, 24 1, and we have 24. That's fine. It's all about our intake off fuel. Now, zero fuel weight, 252.6. 2, 5, 2. Point six. We get our taxi fuel off the flight plan, 2.0. And with that, we check our estimated takeoff weight, 275.8. And our flight plan says 274.5. That's uh, pretty close. So now we're going to go to the electronic flight bag. We're going to come in here. We're going to go to weight and balance. Zero fuel weight CG is 28.4. 28.4. I've got to get one of those mini uh, pads to switch around my displays. Uh, anyway, so there we go. That looks good. Good. So we got an hit one, an hit two. And by the way, before we ever did this, we would have checked their craft status, a database. Today is the 22nd of March, 18 April, so the database is good. Otherwise, we can switch them around. So let's go to the flight plan, get this all set up. Sid, uh, we're going to use the Romas for Sierra, and we're going to go off of a 17 right, 17 right, I always select the runway first, so you get the correct, correct uh, see the south comes up, S, otherwise you go through all of them, it also prevents you possibly from the wrong one, Romas for Sierra, no transition, insert it, and then we're supposed to be Tango 43 Abdil. Is Tango 43 to Abdil? Is Abdil and off Abdil is the arrival into these? And it's going to be uh, ILS Zulu 4 left is our best guess. And we're going to go Abdil 7R. Abdil 7R. No transition. Insert. So then we walk through together. Right, we go to plan. flight plan and we walk through looking for any discontinuities and one guy would be reading off the box the other guy would cross check everything off the flight plan and when we're all done the world's in order we go to frog page and we check the distance 199 against the flight plan distance which is uh, where is that thing 201. Just make sure it's close. 201. All right. So the box is set. Is it? No. Because we have to set the electronic flight bag. Back in here. Go take off. Performance. Runway 17 right. You can sync it if you want. My experience is it's never right. So uh, 080. The winds are 100 at 10. Winds are... 10010 one zero zero ten uh, temperature outside is 27 27 here's a fun fact if you try to set in the altimeter here is 1014 you try to set that in it'll take it it'll go max power so we make sure that you set in uh, the inches 2996 and you got to do it up the keyboard because there's no uh, there's no decimal on the keypad here. 2996, flaps 15, 15, 15, 20, 15, 20 is for a short field. Our weight 275.4, and we're looking for takeoff weight of uh, 274.4. So we'll just let that be a little higher. Flaps 15, 15. And air conditioning is on, anti ice is off because we're above 10 degrees, no visible moisture. Toga's, force toga is off. Calculate. Now, if it doesn't come up with a flex step, either your altimeter is not in uh, inches or your weight is wrong, it's way higher. Sometimes you put an extra X point there. You should get a flex step on a long runway. Just remember these numbers 
63, 53. 63 flex, 53, 63, 63, trim is zero. So 53, 63, 63, trim is zero. Take off, 53, 63. We'll get 63 in here in a minute. While I'm thinking of it, I'm going to go over here, go flex take off, set that at 63. That gives 96.7. So we saved all this engine wear right there. 26 degrees out. The reason why you don't turn on that TAT probes, because it will throw off your thrust rating panel. You get that after engine start. All right? So that's why you don't do that. All right, so that's a little bit of fun fact. Up here, the other one was 63. Now, one little fact here. This is a noise abatement procedure here. We'll review that in a moment for a takeoff. Noise abatement is NADP or IKO A, NADP 1. NADP 1 is thrust reduction of 1500 AFL. That's that one. But engine acceleration is another 1500 feet above that, 3000 AFL. So 1500 is 3793. So 3793. So we've got to maintain V2 or whatever the appropriate additive is, and we lift it off until 3,000 feet. Very, very important here. All right, we don't need to set up our radios. As far as I'm concerned, we are ready to go. I'm going to start up FSI panel. This. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead. Well, let me see here. Let's get GSX started because people are boarded. This parking is too small for Boarding complete. Push, press push. Back to map here. FSI panel has started. So now we can come in here. Remember I told you ADIS is always 2345. 23 The minute I turn this on and activate it, oh, public frequency changing, always, always humbling. I do have a, a Logitech panels, should be using that, 2345, and over here, I'm going to put in guard frequency, 121.5, since there's no apron or ramp. On this side, we would set up our radios. I'm going to just do one thing. Or I'm going to put this, move that over to that side um, for uh, clearance and ground over here. All right, so let's get our ATIS. Copy it down. Hold off on this push back. Now FSI panel, I'm gonna come in here, airline flights, you ready? Let's go, Air France 1704, which is really Air France 48 golf mic. It's the last time we'll use that. Starting, as soon as it starts up, you're gonna hear the ADIS frequency kick on. Download a scenario pack. Uh, Pre-flight is, which is clearance, we'll call them pre-flight 21655. ADIS is available on COM2, acknowledge. Level flight level 60. Acknowledge received Leon Information Tango. This is Leon Information Tango. Runway in use 17 left and 17 right. Departure runway 17 right. Arrival runway 17 left, ILS approach, surface wind 100, 10 knots, visibility 5000 meters, 
cloud scattered 7,000 feet, temperature 27, dew point 14, QNH 1015. Transition level flight level 60. Acknowledge received Leon information tango. All right, so uh, what, what do we get from that? We'll go on guard over here, guys. What we got is that our transition level coming back in is 6,000. What about going out here? Um, we're going to set up the... I have to set this up, and the runway heading is... Uh, let's go over the taxi brief and the takeoff brief before we get our clearance. I always like to know what we're, what we're anticipating. So taxiing out, we're going to push back, nose to the north, and on our lesson plan, it's kind of cheating, I know, I know, it's all this Tango Charlie Tango. I think get that off the lesson plan. So push out, nose to the right, which is nose north, Tango Charlie Tango, and we'll go all the way to the end, Alpha, Alpha 1 is our holding point. Um, Sid. And it's the Roman for Sierra. I always start look for any notes. Transition altitude's 5,000. Sid's a noise baby. That's where I got NADP1. Usually Europe, that is anyway. Strict adherence to limits. So we'll be D2 to 3,000 AFL, above field level. Come in here. Uh, we review our Sid. Right there, there's flight level 70. So that's our initial altitude. Roman for South, climb on a 174 track to 2500, then direct to Roman. So here we are, right hand turn, 174 track, direct Roman. I would be careful with this Airbus, guys. Sometimes if you hit nav right off the bat, it'll start a turn. We know it's pretty much runway heading. I can arm nav here uh, and see how it does, but if those bars go anywhere but straight ahead, there's a good chance it's wrong. So. But be careful. So have an idea what it's supposed to be doing. You'll have the autopilot off. Those bars aren't straight ahead because you're going to go to 2500, which is 1700 AFL. But we'll, we'll give it a shot. But real airplanes, you can arm it, and that would work well. Um, so and anything else? Noise abatement. We check uh, Roman above 2500, no problem. Check the box. Roman above Well, 2,500 before it starts to turn. All right, so that's all good. Before it goes direct Roman, yeah, let's watch that. I uh, been having a lot of trouble with that. Put this guy in flight plan. Pilot flying is on takeoff data. Pilot monitoring on flight plan. That's my airline's technique anyway. And let's go to clearance. 21655. Uh, the first time that you get the clearance, you may have to select it over. The frequency, I was impatient, I started to set it, give it a chance, it, had, it set it and I had already messed with the keys, so that was going to work just fine. But you may have to select it on over there, that's all. First time. Hi buddy. Let's go get our clearance. Leon clearance, Air France 48 Golf bike at gate 65, information tango, request clearance to Nice. Air France 48 Golf Mike, you are clear to Nice as 5, runway 17 right, Roman for Sierra departure, climb initially flight level 70, score 3216. Alright, that's Air France 48 Mike, cleared to Nice as filed, runway 17 right, Roman for South, climb to flight level 70, squawk 3216. Air France 48 Golf Mike, read back is correct. For push and start, contact ground 121 decimal 830. Safe flight, bye bye. 121-830 for push and start for Air France 48 Golf Mike. Au revoir. Au revoir, that's. Well, look at me, you talking all French and all. Uh, so, what do we get here for Squawk? T-A-R-A. And you know what I didn't test was the uh, weather radar. We go system one, top line, test. Just realize that. And we 
got the rainbow there. Turn the radar off for now. I'm just looking at some of the controls on here. Not easy, is it? It's off, I think. Who knows? All right. Uh, let's go outside, take a look, make sure no slides are deployed. I have that happen way too many times. Great, the tugs all hooked up. All right. Give them a call. Uh, I just grabbed one of my switches. When am I going to learn? When am I going to learn? Uh, okay. Before we go, let's do electronic flight bag. Go here. And one of my favorite things is I'll show you right in a second. So remember we set up our flow before starting. Uh, before start, handy skid both on windows. Beacon on, parking brake on. Should be fuel pump on. Let's go to the overhead when I do this. All right, so I'm going to go my trigger on my hostage stick for the flows, the four start flow. Let's get that co-pilot working. They're gonna, they can see that person's going to turn on the fuel pumps, turn the beacons to on. They did that. Seatbelt sign is they turn that on. So we get the fuel pumps on, beacons on. And the uh, only thing I see here, we go back to the EFB, just make sure there's no confusion, is that external power is on. And I do take a final look guys a final look at my overhead for any unwanted light pro feeds come on after engine start no unwanted lights push up control panels all set uh, the heading we didn't set that come on captain marvel 174 you know i did that on my when i did the french version of this before i figured out there was an english version by the way, the French version, I think, was using 1704. This one doesn't. All right, so this one, we can now we can set 250 here, knowing that we're going to maintain V2, though, until 3,000 for our cleanup. Now, yeah, these airbus, it starts accelerating. I tell you what, guys, I'm going to go... 163 level change because it, it starts accelerating uh, on us if you go if you put 250 in there when you go level change so we got nav mode is set we've got room speed heading okay we're good let's uh, get push back and a uh, checklist is complete for push back and leone air france 48 golf mike we press push back gate 65 information tango Air France 40 uh, Golf Mike, uh, push and start approved, uh, face north, we're all ready for taxi. Alright, so brakes are released. Well, I shouldn't do that until I talk to these guys, right? This parking is too small for your aircraft. Can you push back? Goes right. Let's release. Here we go. Start at will. So we're going to go right. Uh, we're going to go crank. Captain's A, FO's B from our airline. And number two first, right engine. Start valves open. We would check that we get 25 PSI that's not modeled correctly. And let's go outside while we look for this. And you know, last time when I did it in French, they stopped us. There's a tight turnout. We'll see how they do here. All right, so here, let's talk about what we're looking for. Oil pressure rise, max motoring above 15%. These are DSCF6 80s guys. We had these on the MD11, which I have a couple thousand hours on. This airplane, CF6 80s, uh, which I have 5,000 hours on, 
and we had them on the 76300. I have 5,000 hours, 7576 typewriting, so I don't know how many of that. But if they have a lot of hours in these engines, it's always two, four, six in the oil gulp. So, and what that is, parking brake set, 20%, 460. Why is that important? Well, if it's stuck in approach idle, you'll see 32. That means the airplane thinks it's got either slots extended or, or ice on. So you look for 246 or your throttle's uh, not in the idle detent. So it's a good check. 246, and we look for the oil gulp, which is not modeled. Let me get rid of these guys. I'll start the right engine. Yeah, they didn't push it back very far, did they? Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. Okay, lower overhead. Crank A, start, start valve is open. You can see that we have 20-something PSI. I should have checked the start valve close at 45%, so what we do is we say, uh, okay, oil pressure rise, there it is. In America, in America, we waited for max motoring, which usually was around 25%. I think the Indy builds, what does it tell us, like 15 or something. We waited for max motoring right about there. Bring it up. We also would check EGT below 100 in case it was a quick turnaround. Now this time, yeah, we're going to look for 2468. We'll come back on and watch the start valve close at 45%, which is uh, not that. So right about now, so the FO would call 45, right about there, and the cap captain called start valve close. Now I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to go after start. We're going to watch the this should go off, fuel valve off, probe heat should go on, but they didn't. So turn the probe heats on, and uh, I was wondering if those lights were on. Uh, okay, let's go outside, see if they're out there for the salute. And they are. Back inside, and sh shine the uh, taxi, flash the taxi light, right here, oh by the way they also turn on the seatbelts on. So with that, you see them walking away, flaps 15, 15, moment of truth, I'm going to go to flight control, so do a couple of things down here, I'm going to go status, can recall it. If that way, if anybody cleared any items, they pop back up. Status, normal. Then we go clear. Engines cleared. And I'm going to go flight controls. Captain usually does the. Uh, oh, why did that pop up? Sorry, guys. Flight control. There we go. Captain usually does the rudders. While he's doing that, or they're doing that, the FO does the tops, ailerons, spoilers, and the elevators. Look for any resistance and full deflection. Looks good. Don't know why I did that. Let's go to electronic flight bag, checklist, by flight. After start, pitch trims on, rudder trim zero zero, spoilers are arm. I didn't know if they arm those, let me see. Yeah, they're armed. And we'll go auto brakes to max. Beacons are on, parking brakes set, pitch trim after start, pitch trim spoilers on, flap slot, anti ice hand signals received. I'm going to do the before takeoff check right here. Flight controls check, flight instrument check, briefings complete, slats and flaps 15 15. Actually, that's why you have a checklist. That's interesting. I wonder if that had something to do, I don't know why that is, flaps went all the way down to 40 on my automatic checklist. I'm going to say that's something I did, because it usually is, right? Uh, thank God for the checklist. Ignition is required, it's before takeoff, transponder, CAR, we got that, motor brakes are max. All right. And uh, ground control is 2183. 2183 was auto tuned. Thank you, sir. Leon Brown, Air France, 48 Golf Mike. 
pushed off uh, gate 65 taxi. Right. Taxi to holding point 17 right via Tango Charlie, then Tango for Air France 48 Cop Mike. You know, I can hardly hear him, and I have the volume up pretty high, so uh, that's why I'm glad I have the uh, thing. I, okay, I have a salute to their left, to their right, and we shouldn't have any problem making the turn here. Truck breaks off. Powers up, breakaway thrust. You know the little needle. See that little needle over here, wherever that is. That's where it's going. So that'd be about 37. That'll get us moving. 40% is the mid breakaway. And I'm going to take a turn. Try not to ride the brakes. All right. Takeoff brief. I'm going to set 40%, then I'm going to go Toga, which is here. Of course, in the real life, it's down here. Remember, I'm doing this video, guys, to uh, for those people who have never uh, flown this airplane. Tango Charlie's are next right. And let's slow it down just a bit. Make sure the brakes work, too. Uh, I'll set 40%, then I'm going to go Toga. We're looking for a, a temp tape 96.7 is what we'll be looking for. No engine ice on, packs are on, plenty of runway. Uh, so we got a engine out altitude of 2,600 feet, a mid sector altitude. We'll clean it up at 2,600. A mid sector altitude of around 3,500 feet. We'll come back in here. The long runway is this one. The outboard runway is kind of short. So let's come back into the 17 right. But 40% uh, will set the toga. We'll get the thrust blue at about 70 knots or so. Thrust blue, which is clamp or, you know, uh, the throttles are locked at that point. You can move them manually, but the auto throttles are no longer manipulating them. So that's thrust blue. Uh, we've got nav pre-arm, but we'll go V1, we'll rotate, get right up in the command bars, and uh, somewhere in there at 400 feet, looking for nav. But if it doesn't go straight ahead, because remember, we're not turning until 2,500 feet. So if this, these bars move at all, we're going to go back to runway heading, heading select, and we'll do it manually. And at 2,500 feet, we'll go direct, we'll get the autopilot on and go direct. But we're supposed to maintain V2, that's why I don't have 250 in here. V2, yeah, or awesome. whatever the lift up, the tilt. Air France 48 Golf Mike, uh, Tower 2045. Thanks a lot. You have a great day. A bit of time, guys, down here. It takes a little while. And there it goes. I was just very impatient. JP said, Hey, in your video, you said it didn't change. So you got to be patient. And it'll take the FO a while to set that anyway, right? Leon Tower, Air France, 48 Golf Mike is ready for takeoff on 17 right. Air France, 48 Golf Mike, good morning. Continue holding point Alpha 1. And good morning. Uh, continue to holding point Alpha 1 for Air France, 48 Golf Mike. Alpha 1 is down at the very end. This yeah, so will uh, get, make sure we have climb power set at 1500 AFL and we'll get uh, V2 or whatever our appropriate additive was. When we lift it off, level change up to 3,000 AFL, which is 3,800 on the altimeter. And uh, any questions? No questions. Takeoff brief is complete. And uh, one more thing I'll show you here. So after start, procedures are complete. Taxi procedures are complete. The lineup flow 
I've selected lights on, packs on. If I wanted lights off, when I line up, some airlines turn your lights off and you go for takeoff, or it's packs off, takeoff, I do that. But I'm going to have lights on when I line up and packs on. And after start, 15, 15 was selected. I don't know why it went to 15, 30, 40. It Maybe it's almost always something I do wrong. Almost always. Two minutes, a little later than two minutes prior, we say flight attendants prepare for takeoff. The only thing that we should have checked, and I saw they did it, and I missed it, was takeoff check is normal. There it is. That checks uh, stab trip <laughs> in the green where it's boost speed zero. And as you can see on the elevator, it's at zero. Flaps handle matches the gauge. Doors, parking brake. Flaps and slides. Air France 48 Golf Mike, runway 17 right. Line up and wait. Line up and wait, 17 right, Air France 48 Golf Mike. All right, line up and wait, final is clear. Checklist. Line up flow. It's gonna get the lights for me. Final is clear. Just doing a few things. We'll take a look at that when we get out there. Let's see what it did. Yeah, I love this. So we gotta hire a co-pilot to change the radios. Run the uh, flows for us. We got the say again button program. Uh, remember, spoilers retract. We also set that to do the after landing check. We can do that two ways: spoilers retract or hit the lineup flow. Lineup and wait. Hope you enjoyed this, guys. If you wouldn't mind subscribing, that'd be great. Wind one zero zero at one two knots. Runway one seven right. Clear for takeoff. Runway heading check. Clear for takeoff, one seven right, Air France, 48 golf mic. Let's get over here, guys, sorry. Yeah, runway heading is good. Uh, I just want to go back to the overhead, make sure they got everything. I'm going to go continuous on the relay. Lights are all on. And uh, it's all good. Let's go. 40%, above 40%. Make sure they're coming up evenly. We do that to make sure the engines come up evenly. They're coming up nice and evenly. And we'll go toga. Right now it's thrust green. We're going to get a thrust blue here. Get over on center line. A little bit of forward stick pressure. Chill about 100 knots. Otherwise, it's really squirrely. There we go, fresh blue. Take that stick pressure RP1 and rotate. Two to three degrees per second. Up into the command bars. Positive rate on the altitude indicator. Gear up. Remember, nothing but straight ahead till 2500. We're in nav now. Next thing we're doing is V2. I'm going to go level change here. So we're supposed to maintain a V2 until we get up a little higher. Autopilot can come on. Air France 48 Golf Mike, contact departure 136 decimal 075. Bye bye. 136 075. Bye bye, Air France. 48 mic. Golf mic. All right, there's out of three. Let's see what we're doing, V2 plus 10. Now I'm going to say, here it is, out of 3,800. We'll start lowering the nose. I'm in level change, by the way. There's V2 until 3,800 feet. Air France, Golf mic, out of 4,000 from flight level 70. Flash Air France, up. 48 Golf mic, identified. Continue as cleared. Continue as cleared, Air France, 48 Golf mic. See how the uh, nav just went off, guys? That's what I mean. You got to watch it. I'm going to come back over to the course, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my altitude out of five checked. One, two, three times. And this slots retract. So you got to watch it. It just does it. Uh, so I'm going to go direct. Roman. Here. Nav. And you tell him. And he would, he'd be fine with it. So uh, there we go. Gears up. Flaps up out of flight level, that's a transition altitude. 
we're level changing it up to five thousand uh, flight level seven zero and over here i'm gonna get this guy into uh air france 48 golf mike continue climb flight level 130 continue climb flight level 130 for air france golf mike 48 golf mike ah. all right so we're navin it we're speeding it we can profile now profile nav we're good to go and let's run the after takeoff checklist which basically is spoilers disarm i wonder if we'll get the continuous relight we'll take a look so we'll come in here after takeoff i just love this let's get the co-pilot working here okay we gotta get our own it, it, this isn't coming off guys because that's a technique anyway and lights out of 10 we'll get um, some airlines don't take off with continuous power. That, what continuous does is gives you both igniters, uh, so that if you were to lose an engine on takeoff or approach, it would uh, you'd have a better chance of getting a restart. That's why you have uh, that. But some airlines don't do that, which is why it's not modeled here. All right, and we're looking for out of 10,000. In the U.S., we use 18, but here in Europe, 10,000 AFL, which is it was 800 feet, so that's uh, right about 10.8, right? So let's go Air back France to the overhead. Air France 48 Golf Mike for IR, contact Marseille, 126 decimal 15. Bye bye. 12615 for Air France 48 Golf Mike. So we chime them out of 10. Three six zero seven five. And departure, Air France 48 Golf Mike is out of 110 for 130. Uh oh. 136075, right? Departure, Air France 48 Golf Mike's out of 120 for 130. Uh-oh. 136075. 136075. Let's make sure we get the right frequency. Air France for oh. Golf Mike for IR contact Marseille. 126 decimal 15. Bye bye. And that's what that say again button is. We would have said say again the frequency. Pretty cool, huh? That's got me. Marseille, Air France, uh, 48 Golf Mike at flight level 130. Air France, uh, 48 Golf Mike, but I contact to climb flight level 170. Climb flight level 170 for Air France, 48 Golf Mike. 170 set, profile climb is set, climb power is set. Here we go. Yeah, so that, uh, all debriefing the takeoff, um, we did V2 plus uh, additives all the way up to 3,000 AFL, which is 3,800. That worked out pretty well, and at that point, we just lowered the nose uh, via the airspeed, bumped that up to 250, and we're level changing it. And uh, we, actually, I went level change out of about 1,000 when I turned on the autopilot, level change, V2, level change kept it climbing, climb power, and uh, got it cleaned up. Once I hit 3,000 AFL, which is 3,800, I let it by a little bit. I lowered the nose by putting the speed, cleaned it up. What happened that went wrong? Well, what happened was the uh, box was on nav. All of a sudden, it started going wild to the right. You just got to be ready, and that's, that stuff does happen. And as I took it over heading, went back to the heading, I would have informed ATC, hey, our autopilot's uh, our navigation and he'll say, no problem. And it's 16 for 17 on the altitude, guys. Anyway, they took it over heading, got the box so straight out. 48 Golf Mike, maintain flight level 170. Air France and 48. Further climb shortly. Air France 48 Golf Mike, maintain flight level 170. Expect that climb shortly, guys. No reason for me to say expect this climb shortly, I should have just said maintaining flight level 170. Let's 
restraints on here. Uh, we might just start getting set up for the arrival. Pretty short flight, not too bad, but pretty short. Here's the Abdil arrival. Abdil below 19. Amfo below 16. Tippic at 250, it's below 12. All right, Abdil below 19. Amfu below 16. And Tippic 250 and 12. Why does Amfu at 250 is beyond me or Abdil? There's really no reason for that. Let me see tack mode. Air France uh, 48 Golf Mike, climb flight level 210, final. Air France 48 Golf Mike, climb maintain flight level 212. It's our final altitude. Power's coming in, profile climb. Yeah, I don't like the way the box is set up, guys. There's no reason on the, uh, I don't see anything that says 250 below 10, that's okay. But the first 250 is typical at 250. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go 250 way out here. So um, let me go here. Abdil. I'm going to say speed 280. Eighty gyro, I'd say two eighty. Yeah, I don't know why that's in there. Why those speeds were in there? I think that's going to be better. Start off two eighty seven, two eighty, two fifty at Tippic. So yeah, look at this. Amfu, I'll say two eighty. So there's Abdil, everything's at 280. I just want to make sure you have enough room to slow down. Three minutes, no, so I better go. I'll go 250 at Amfu. Because that's only three minutes out. I'll give it 250 there. But not way out there. All right, cool. It's 20 for 21. <coughs> so we brief the arrival. <coughs> Let's brief the approach. Nice approach, approach, and it is going to be the ILS 4 left Zulu. I love that's RMP. ILS 4 left Zulu, and I'm going to pin that to start menu. Yeah, we got a few things to do with this, don't we? It's ILS Zulu 4 left, we're leveling at 21. 11 uh, 1, data uh, activation 29 September 23, 109, 95, and 042. There we go, we're level. Cruise power is set. 0995042. So let's go here. I'll go uh, throttle quad in my view here. I want to make sure I get this right. Public frequency changing. Nine ninety five zero four two ninety five zero four two nine ninety five zero four two and the DA is uh, category C three eleven and three hundred. I start on the box three eleven. Then I go my orange bug. Three eleven. And then up here. Three hundred. Let's go take a look outside. 
just for fun, okay? This is the top of descent, it's coming up. So we gotta kinda we'll get this done here. There it is. Air flight, Air France flight 48 Golf Mike. You guys are gonna like the MB11, I'm involved with that. Uh, nice machine. I wrote all the checklists for it, the beta versions, they're fixing them up. Looks good. Uh, Alright, let's go back inside. It just made me think of that when I looked around, it looked nice. There it is, it's getting ready for the descent, slowed down a little bit. We haven't been cleared yet. Back to the approach. So we got the minimum set, we got the marker crossing, 4,000. And uh, we got the minimum set, yep, uh, we have the weather. Oh, jeez, weather. I'm back over here. I get caught with this on my French version. Runway dry. Braking action good. Acknowledge receive Nice. Information Romeo. This is Nice Information Romeo. Runway in use 04 left and 04 right. Departure runway 04 right. Arrival runway 04 left. ILS approach. Surface wind 080. 10 knots. Visibility 8,000 meters. Cloud scattered 5,000 feet. Temperature 26, dew point 18, QNH 1015, transition level flight level 60, runway dry, braking action good, acknowledge received please. Information Romeo. Romeo. Alright, information Romeo. Transition level is flight level 60. And that's information Romeo. ILS 4 left and right. Transition level 60. Wind 080 or 10, so a little bit of a light cross. 8,000 meters scattered. <clears throat> All right, 1015 cell tower. All right, we're, so we're ready for that. <clears throat> By the way, JP's come up with these new uh, Vessel 5 panel profiles where you can actually choose. They, they change about this, this, this profile thing. They can change runways. They can give you holding. They can divert you. They can um, have a medical emergency. Uh, now the new thing is you can, they can, you can choose your approach, different things. They can ask you, uh, would you like to do this or that? I was going into Nassau, and here it goes. Air yeah. France Floret Golf Mike, when ready, descent flight level 1660, and cross Abdil flight level 190 Orbido, and cleared Abdil 7 Romeo. Air France 48 Golf Mike, we're descending now to flight level 160, cross Abdil flight level 190 below, and we are cleared the Abdil 7 Romeo. <coughs> Alright, cleared the uh, Romeo. If you want to know how far above the glide path you are, because he's a little late descending, because I should have asked him. We're only 40, 470 feet above. Um, if you wanted to help it get down faster, you could give it a little bit of speed break, and that'll help you catch up with the vertical nav here. See this 390, 230, right about there. Bring it back up, and uh, we're good to go. We're caught up. All right, so we had to go Abdil, Flight level 19 or below, and we're there. We're 19 or below. And it's following the profile descent. Nice. The uh, approach, and that we got that missed approach will be up to 3,000. Big right turn heading 140. After landing. After landing. When I did the Air France one, it put me at gate 48 Charlie. Uniform Charlie. I don't know if that's what they're going to give us or what. So we're going to land here. Four left. Uniforms over here. 48 Charlie was like over here. Let me take a look where that was. Parking stands. 48 Charlie. Kind of all right in the middle of that one, isn't it? So let's put that on our... The new handy dandy. Pinking bandy here, right about in there. So we'll go uniform. I'll be clear. Echo Golf. 48 Charlie. Pardon my penmanship. So you got a uniform. Charlie. Might get off at Echo Fox. That'd be a short taxiway. I don't want to heat the brakes up. There's no hurry. So I'll probably just let it roll out. 
out of 18, the U.S. we get the lights, but uh, we have to 10 usually in Europe, but I'm going to go and get uh, everything on here. Strobe's on, nose on, everything's on. Make our PA turn the seatbelt sign back on. Ow. It's never off. We can put the approach, we gear down, we'll go, but I'm going to go continuous now while I'm thinking about it. Now, there is no checklist on the electronic flight bag. Oh, it's getting down a little low. It's 17 for 16. That's fine. Because our box says AMFO below 16, and we're at Gibral, and that doesn't, doesn't have a hard out to. That's just profile. So 16 is, uh, 16 is fine. 17 for 16. And 250 is in there. That's fine. All right, so I think we've briefed everything. We just go take off data, uh, landing data here, take off. 3040 is the flaps, 131, uh, yeah, be that. 131 is set, will be set. And then uh, you click on final approach when you're in there. You click on final approach, it'll give you a three degree glide path. But uh, we're not doing that just yet. Leveling at 16. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. Air France uh, Floride uh, Golf Mike contacted Miss Approach on a uh, 134 decimal 475. Good day. 134 475. Good day for Air France 48 Golf Mike. Give it a minute. Five. Four, there it is. 134 475. And approach for information. Romeo. Miss Approach Air France. 48 Golf Mike, information Romeo, flight level 160. Air France Void, Golf Mike, uh, bonjour, identified Abdil 7 Romeo arrival, runway 04 left. And good morning, uh, Air France 48 Golf Mike, Abdil 7 Romeo arrival, and expect the uh, ILS 4 left. All right, so we're as briefed, guys, as briefed. This flight level 60 is the transition altitude. Funky thing is, if you push the B key on your keyboard now, it would change the altimeter. So, because anything below 18, it would change it. We're not going to do that. So, um, on the prog here, we should always keep a uh, figure out how far we are from the destination. So, Lima Fox, Lima Lima. We are 111 miles out. So, we have plenty of time. Let me see if that works with the. Uh, uh, that's on the route. 111 is on the route. As the crow flies, 84 miles to destination. 84 miles to destination. So this isn't right here. That's on the route. That's destination 84, which checks with um, the box, kind of. It's a little bit messed up. I request lower. We're getting above our profile here. But he's not going to answer me. He would have no way to do it. So you can notice we're getting a little above our profile. You got to be below 16 at AMFO. AMFO's up here, 250 knots below 16. Tipix really would need to be 250, but um, we're going to be below 12 at Tipic. We got 40 miles. I don't know. I think it's wrong. This is saying that we're below, but really, if you look at the numbers, we're pretty good. Top of descent, it says we're 12, 1,100 feet above our plan. I don't know, it looks fine to me. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, subscribe if you would. It's funny, uh, I'm kind of stagnant. I've uh, been on the TFT IMD 11. I started off on P3D in the 777 because uh, I was flying the 777 actively with American Airlines. It was messing me up to do anything but the 777. That was kind of a study level over there. I was doing all, before I went over there, it was Microsoft Flight Simulator doing all sorts of World War II fighters, Airbus, A320s, 737, MD-11, 760. I was all over the place. I would get to work and I didn't remember if it was push, pull, profile, level change. It was messing me up. So I just exclusively P3D, 777. That's where I built my channel. I started to do that stuff. And, um, and of course, with my credentials, I had a lot of viewers over there on P3D. 
But it was time to transition over to Microsoft Flight Simulator because I was involved with the TFDI MD-11 program, so I had to get used to it. And I was going to try to get on the PMDG 777 program, just to kind of, so I, I deleted P3D, came on over here. Uh, boy, they are taking their time to sending us, and I, let's say I called them and they wouldn't let me go because we definitely would have called them. Uh, still, we got to be below 12 at Tippic, and that's 30 miles away, so that's only 4,000 feet, so we're really okay. So this profile's probably a little bit off. Anyway, came over here, uh, been flying a lot of MD-11, but we're on a hiatus over there in the MD-11 while Microsoft Flight Simulator has a broken code, which is delaying our project. I'm telling you guys, they're going to have uh, freighters, passenger versions, uh, they're going to have all sorts of cargo loading like on this thing. They have the fully integrated uh, eight cars, flight, uh, EFB, great graphics, terrific graphic, great flight model. That thing, they get a lot of criticism on it. They've had an unbelievable level of transparency over there. So people are criticizing them. Where PMGG is developing the 777, and you haven't heard much. They keep it a little closer to the vest. They released a pro promo video or two. Those guys are a little more private. I am involved with them as well, but I'm supposed to be part of their beta testing team, so they haven't called me yet, which tells me they're not quite at beta. Um, but I'm looking forward to that naturally more than anything because that's what I used to fly. But uh, TFDI MD-11 is expensive when it comes out, but I think it's going to be worth it. If you're into long haul, long haul cargo, it's going to be a terrific, uh, terrific airplane. I did a lot of the uh, fuel yeah, modeling. Fast forward, Golf Mike, in descent, flight level 80, be level by Mike, Uniform Sierra. Send a flight level 80, be level by Mike Uniform Sierra for Air France 48 Golf Mike. 80, and I'm going to start as a level change, guys. Why am I starting as a level change? Because we were above, right? And these are all at or belows in 250. So I'll just do a 250 knot descent. I've got the banana here. There's a good reason they call it the banana, right? What does that look like to you? A banana. As long as that's before MUS, uh, I know that I'm good to go. So if they were to clear as direct, it might be tight, but right now it looks like we're okay. And cross it at, this is at or above, so I'm not paying attention to that. So the profile's kind of on. We also always have a little bit of speed brake to do a little better, but right now I think we're fine. I would do my PA to the people, make sure the seatbelt sign was on, all the lights are on. Looks good, and let's do a descent check. Oh, landing elevation. Yeah, that's why I wish the EFB on here had a uh, descent check, but it doesn't. If you take a look, it's basically just after takeoff, approach, set. nothing for cruise or descent. Approach or signs, briefing, in cam status, altimeters, minimum set both, ignition continuous relight, landing elevation set. So I guess that's good enough. Approach, right? Yeah, it looks like that. we're going to make it, no problem. So don't pay attention. This now profile is at or above at MUS. He told us cross MUS at flight level 80. Remember, flight level 60 is our transition altitude. And the altimeter is going to be 1015. And we have that preset. Oh. 1015, we're going to go back to uh, here. I, I, I moved my little bug here. 311, 300, this back in set. That's just a reminder, a visual indication. This is where you'll get your minimums call. In your box, we put in 311. Your final approach, I guess, when you get on final, if you were doing like an RNAV, you can click final, it will give you a three degree glide path. So if you're on a uh, visual or you're on a, um, you want this profile to work out, you're on an RNAV on this airplane and you're inside the FAF, if you hit final approach, it'll give you the three degree glide path, as I understand it. Now it is saying that it's going to make it uh, before then, but if you look, That's about uh, it's 20, about five miles. So it's got to transition to level off, right? Might take a couple, but I still believe we're going to be just fine there. We're going to be level nice and early.
One thing I gotta remember to do is to go to ILS and we're clear for the ILS and land. You can actually go ILS now. All that dude does is um, take away the VOR auto tuning for the GPS. If you leave it a nav, it allows it the the box to auto tune VORs to cross tune this close in. We're good to go. In my opinion. Yeah, this is good. It's uh, working out well. Hopefully I can find gate 48 Charlie. Haven't gotten that far. I wonder if GSX can program that. Pre-program it. I'm not good with this GSX stuff. I'm still learning it. Um, probably not. Yeah, after landing we'll try it. We know basically where it is. It's on that circle, the, the spaceship, right on the end. It's right there. We'll look for... I'll activate GSX when we clear. Hey, guys, by the way, I'm having a little trouble with my reversers. They work fine on landing, but then they um, they don't come in, and I get stuck sta taxiing. So I'm going to simulate reverse thrust today uh, just because my reversers, yeah, I've been having trouble that it doesn't want to move. <clears throat> on the taxi and it's happened to me a few flights in a row so today I'm going to say that where I'd be reversing and not do it I can't figure out why they're getting stuck in reverse I air am able to eventually get them out of reverse but not without uh, causing an extensive delay in the video so we'll simulate reverse today we didn't have any reverse thrust in our landing data by the way I don't believe another question I would have for you guys is uh, on the performance is there a way to do landing data Try sinking it. I don't think there is. Yeah. There's eight leveling. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Next frequency we would have set would be uh, Tower 18.7. Now, we don't have to do that after we're bat seven that we would, right? I should be practicing that even though I have the auto frequency turn, turn changes because otherwise you get over to bat seven and you're all out of practice. We are fast flight to Golf Mike, turn left heading 045 and descend 5000 feet QNH 1015 vectors for ILS 04 left. Air France 48 Golf Mike, left to 045, descend to 5,000 feet, and expect the ILS vectors 04 left. 5,000. There we go. So we got level change 250 going down to 5,045. Let's go outside. Nice. It's not turbulence. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. All right, so I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. Looks like we're about 30 miles out, 7,000. Now we're in good shape. I can keep my speed up. We're in a heading. The only thing I would caution you on, see how uh, Lempu's in the green. If you go missed approach and you're not updated on your box, I'm going to leave Lempu for now. You want the whatever's in front of you to be green when you intercept final, even if you're on a heading. So don't forget about your map mode. Um, otherwise, if you go nav on the missed approach and, and the airplane doesn't know where it is, you've lost your nav capability. And sometimes it's an RNAV departure. So always make sure that the appropriate one point is in front of you. Right now it's fine. It's Lempu is in green. Here comes six for five. We're, uh, let's see, 15 miles from the final approach fix. I'll bring us back. They probably would slow us down anyway. I'll bring us back to 210. Yeah, because we're right now 27 miles out. That's a little early to slow down. I'll go 230. They might scream at us if we slow down. I know at Kennedy, they would crucify you if you did any kind of speed change without their approval. Okay, we're out of 16. Altimeters, 
Air France 48 Golf Out of six. Uh, reduce speed 190 knots or less. Slow to 190 less, Air France 48 Golf Light. That made it easy. 190. Here's a transition level. 190. Slots, oh, that's below green dot. Right, so I gotta go slots extend. I'm gonna go ahead and arm the spoilers. I'm gonna set my brakes at uh, now low. Plenty of runway. What is our final approach speed? I mentioned 131. We're on kind of a funky little turn. Golf Mike, turn right at 130 and descend 4,000 feet. Right heading 130, descend to 4,000 for Air France 48 Golf Mike. All right, there's 4,000, it's in the window, 130 is in the heading. One three zero four thousand, hundred ninety 4,000, 190 knots or greater. Um, 130, so... Yeah, I don't want to take this out just yet because they might say direct to Lempu. So I got to leave that in. But you see, Lempu's in the green. That's fine right now. It's four for five. He said 190 or less. So I'll go 180. And I'm going to go slots. Or 15, or slots 15, 15. There we go. ILS is selected in case we get cleared. 4,000 is the uh, final approach fix altitude, but 3,000 is the missed approach altitude when we get there. So because we want missed approach altitude heading and airspeed set on final. I'm expecting to turn us somewhere in here. We're only five miles out. good at 170. I like to be uh, configured by the FAF. That's pretty long final. Air France 48 Golf Mike, turn left heading 080, clear ILS 04 left. Air France 48 Golf Mike, left 080, clear the ILS. Left. Somehow I clicked the wrong button there guys, sorry. All right, I'd, I'd like to get established on the heading before I click the ILS because otherwise I've had aircraft just descend or climb on up to the glide slope. So once I roll out on a 080, I've got ILS selected. I'll do it. Now see how I'm going to go ahead to the box and go direct to the FAF so that my um, box will be up, updated. I'm not in nav, so it doesn't really matter. All right now we're stable on a heading 040. I'll go uh, zero, eight, zero, 080. Zero. I'll go lo arm the localizer with course selected. It comes to glide so of course we'll be coming off the wall here shortly. Let's go gear down. Spoilers are armed. Brakes are armed. I don't think there's a checklist that we have for that. Alright, gears down and locked, so let's go flaps 1520. Start bringing the speed back a little bit. Flaps 3040. And we're heading around. Thirty forty, we'll get our approach speed set. All right, there's load capture. Runway's in sight. Remember, left-hand turn off. And there's light slope capture. Now we can go set our missed approach altitude, 3,000. So we have runway heading set, 3,000. We're at approach speed. We'll preset a missed approach speed of uh, 230. Just because. All right, so 
when there is no real flow for our after, uh, for after landing until after landing. We're not clear to land yet, I don't believe. Most guys will not put on their um, nose light until they're clear to land. That's a reminder. Uh, taxi in, remember? Yeah, France Corée Golf Park, contact tower, 118 decimal 7, safe landing. Bye bye. Air France 48 Golf Mike, tower 187. Uh, Good grade day, Keep it a time. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's going to change over. Nope. Tower Air France, 48 Golf Mike for ILS 4 left. Air France 48 Golf Mike, good morning. Continue approach. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Continue approach for Air France 48 Golf Mike. All right, continue. Not clear to land yet. All right. I just wanted to review the landing before I hand fly it here. Talk about the taxi in again. Probably Echo Golf. Four left. That's about 6,000 feet down the runway. Echo Golf. High speed. Turn on uniform. We don't have reverses. Charlie. And right at the end of that spaceship there. We'll be good to go. I want to get this map set up so it's not in my way. side. A little more visible, right? All right. All right, let's get the autopilot off. Do some of this pilot stuff here. Autopilot's off. A little bit out of trim, not bad. All right, so we got the misapproach all set up if we need it. It's 3,000 feet. Basically a heading, right-hand heading, or directed by tower. A little sink here. Pull up the nose, trim it up. Let's get right on that glide path. A little bit of a right cross right now. And we've got a brake slow, spoilers are. I don't think we're clear to land yet. We aren't. That would be a go-around. If we have to go around, it's uh, going around Toga, flaps 15. Positive rate gear up, set this approach altitude, which would be 3,000. 400 feet, appropriate roll mode, either nav or heading. Uh, we've got runway heading set in there. And then at 1,000 feet, France start cleaning it up. Mike, wind 090 degrees, 10 knots, runway 04 left, clear to land. Clear to left, zero, uh, land, 04 left for Air France, 48 Gulf Mike. Clear to land, guys. There are two land. And that's we check our taxi light in the landing position. Yeah, that's the reason that a lot of guys use that taxi light in landing is uh, if they start saying, they did, were we ever clear to land, they look up there and that, that reminds them if they were. Of course, there's always key in the mic and uh, you say again, landing clearance for American. Or, okay, sorry about that. Tell my old Air France 48 cup mic. Let's try to get a nice landing. This FSI panel does have a landing app that's kind of cool. It says landing inhibited. Why is landing inhibited? Landing inhibited. Maybe because auto pilot's off. I don't know. Yeah, you guys got to get this FSI panel. It's pretty cool. So below a thousand stable approach. But we're VMC. You need to be a 500 stable by my airline. My old airline. I've got to tell you guys, this retirement stuff, it's like a lifelong vacation. Oh my God. Of course, you guys over in Europe retire earlier than we do. All right, so if it's sensitive as we get in closer, take it over visually. I see the Vazis right over white. A little bit below the glide slope, we're fine. 
is on the Vazies here. Go below the line. So potentially, you always let the other guy know. One hundred. Left the center line in the touchdown zone. Not good. I'm not going to go reverse, guys. Sorry. I'll let it roll out here a bit. No matter what, I'm going to get hot breaks anyway. There's 80. We'll be coming out of reverse. Take the high speed up here. Air France 4 is good, Mike. Bienvenue à Nice. Left on U4. Contact ground on 121. Air France uh, 48 golf, Mike. 21705 in uniform. Good day. Um, I hope we didn't lock up here, guys. I didn't even use reverse. It's not moving. Nope, I don't know what it was. All right, so if you want to run the after landing check, you don't do that until you clear. Let's look down here. Our ground is set. And these ground, Air France 48 golf Mike is about to clear runway four left for uniform. We got our speed assignment here. All right, ground one two one seven zero five. Ground Air France uh, forty eight golf Mike. Uh, didn't move it over, guys. Always something. By the time bill. And ground America uh, Air France 48 golf Mike, we're clearing four left for uniform. Air France 48 golf Mike. Good morning. Taxi stand 48 Charlie. Yeah, uniform and Charlie. Gate uh, stand 48 Charlie, uniform Charlie for Air France 48 golf Mike. Good morning. Getting a little bit of frames drop off, aren't I, guys? All right, so if I retract the speed brake, it'll start doing the after landing checklist. Or, better yet, I hear it doing it. You hear that? Start, it should be starting the APU. I could also do, that's the flaps being brought up. Come in here. After landing. There it goes, lights are coming off, AP starting, spoilers are disarmed, flaps are up. All right, cool. Let's go see if we can find 48 Golf Charlie. Let's go to GSX and see if they can help us. Uh, I might just spin around. Well, we said it was right off the end there. For uh, I've got the brake fans on, by the way. I don't know if GSX is going to cooperate. Let me come to Nice. You completed the Air France 1701 and 1704 roster schedule. Easy flight, short, but early morning departure. I hope you enjoyed it. Any feedback or any comments, please log into the forum. I will be very pleased to hear your comment. Again, very, very good uh, voices from the French team. Thank you very much, guys, for having me on that uh, flight. As always, stay safe. See you for the next one. If you guys don't know uh, JP, that was JP. Um, he's the man. All right, so Charlie is up a little further. That's Delta. I would say our next right is Charlie. GSX is not going to cooperate. That gate we said was right off the end of the terminal. I was hoping to get uh, GSX to help me out here. American Airlines uh, Mad Dog there. This gate 50, next left is 48, Charlie.
it. 48 Charlie, next left. I'm gonna do this from the outside. A little easier to taxi from this view, right? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I don't know what's going on. If you guys have any suggestions why my reversers keep getting stuck out, I probably have it uh, mapped incorrectly on the simulator. Air France, 48 Golf Mike, and we're at gate 48. Probably wasn't lost on Charles and I. JP probably wouldn't plan. Oh, I see what's going on, guys. Uh, my throttles weren't working because I was on the exterior view. Yeah, a little uh, Simpsonship there. All right, 48 Golf Mike. Fuel truck's in the way, but we're going to pretend it is. And we do have, I don't know if we're going to get a guy here because I wasn't able to get GSX working. And the 48 Charlie. Sign. That ah, looks pretty close. I would say I'm yeah, good enough. All right, brakes park. Seatbelt sign is off. APU is running. Chop the engines. Go to the overhead. Big thing is get the beacons off. They'll start reporting that way. Wing lights are off. Everything there's off. Let's uh, run the checklist here, the shutdown. We'll see if it does it for us. Shutdown checklist. Let's watch it do it. Fuel pumps are going to come off. Probe heat's going to come off. Window heat's going to come off. There it goes. Fuel pumps are coming off. We'll get GSX deflaming here. If it will come on. Uh, it doesn't look like it's working, does it? That's too bad. And there's probe heats off, window heats off, lights are off. How about IRUs? Check those off. Yeah, for whatever reason, the uh, GSX doesn't want to work. I'll give it one more shot here in a minute. But it's not really important. This parking is too small for your aircraft. Okay. Oh, so that means maybe GSX is here. Are you here, fellas? This parking is too small. There we for your go. Alright, reposition aircraft. Nah, we're good. We're good. Reposition here at the current gate. Good. This parking is too small for your aircraft. Avoiding the question. Alright. Checklist is complete. I'm going to go to the electronic flight bag. I'm going to get some external power plugged in. It's 27 degrees here, 26 degrees Celsius. Uh, so it's going to get warm in a hurry. Toggle chocks. And that way we get the brakes off so get the heat up. Let's toggle catering. Let's toggle it all, guys. Power unit. Jetway's coming in. So we're good to go there. And uh, go to the overhead. Get the external on. We would leave the APU running um, here. Passengers the Keep it cool, but there we are in a hurry. And if it's going to be warm for a quick turnaround, we would um, go ahead and uh, close all the window shades when they get off. Let's take a look around. We'll leave the lights on for now. That's all we'll do in the aircraft for now. Could shut it all the way down when they get off, but let's go, let's go outside. There we go. So we just did a flight from uh, Lyon to Nice, FSI panel profile, a lot of fun, thank you guys, if you wouldn't mind subscribing that would be great, liking the video if you like it, that just always makes me feel good, and lastly, there we go, bye folks, I'm the tallest captain of the airlines. You guys got to fly with me. I'm the smallest captain. Oh, that's not good. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. It's uh, about the time checking out FSI panel profile from 
Lyon Denise flying the Indy Builds A300 in Air France colors. And boy, it's just beautiful here. Look at this beautiful place. Anyway, without further ado, this is, uh, oh, there's my old airline. They used to fly this uh, Mad Dog. That's uh, a long way from home. All right, guys, uh, Father Time is out. Thanks for all your support. I really appreciate you guys. Wow.